Dear colleagues, first of all, uh, my gratitude for the invitation to participate in this meeting and my sincere apologies for not being with you today at Stanford. I would have loved to be there uh, and join the discussion with you. Unfortunately, I was held back by the agenda here in the Netherlands, so my sincere apologies. However, given the topic, it is my great pleasure to at least uh, contribute to the, the overall discussion because gastric cancer, uh, the etiology of gastric cancer, but also the prevention of gastric cancer is extremely important. Having said that, I would first like to refer to this first slide, which shows you an overview of the well-known Global Burden of Disease Project, an international consortium which published a number of years ago that on average in little over 20 years, life expectancy of the world population had increased with 6.3 years, an immense achievement of us all. And if you just focus, for instance, on North America or Central America, there was an increase in approximately four years due to improvement of outcome of a range of different conditions. In orange, improvement of outcome of cardiovascular disease. In yellow, oncology. In blue, infectious diseases, etc. And when you look at individual contributions of the introduction of particular drugs, cancer screening programs, etc., then we have to realize that this is basically the movement of a centipede. Every individual leg is needed to make the animal move forward. However, one step of one leg doesn't seem to have any impact at all. And yet, it's all very, very important. And in that respect, it's also very relevant to have the discussion here today on the impact of gastric cancer prevention. When we do so, we have to realize a couple of issues, and you are very well aware of them, but I would like to point them out nevertheless. First of all, that when we look at all this impact and all these efforts, that they came with tremendous also financial issues. What you see here shown on this slide is data from the OESD uh, for a range of different countries across the world with in blue on a larger period from 1990 to 2012, but we could extend to nowadays, in blue the average percent percentual increase of GDP per capita. And in red, for the same country, the red dot, the average increase in health spending per capita. And what you can see is over a long period, and as mentioned, we can extend to today, health expenditure increased at a more rapid rate than GDP. If we look at another issue, all these involvements and also an aging population, etc., has had a tremendous impact on the demand on our workforce, with nowadays approximately one in six people with a job in the US, like in the Netherlands and worldwide, one in six people with a job working in healthcare. And if we just continue this pace, then in 2040, it will be one in four something which will be very difficult to achieve and for which we have to find other solutions. And if you bring all of that together, the demand on our workforce, the increase in cost and several other issues, like also marked inequity, then we have to think and put much more emphasis on prevention. And when you look at that, we working in gastroenterology and in the GI field, are perhaps more than any other field and any other physician and nurse are involved in thinking since long about prevention. Almost a quarter of all human cancers arise in the GI tract and almost without exception, they all have precursors that are for many, many years prior to the uh, occasion of the diagnosis of cancer are identifiable and treatable. And you see on the slide just a number of examples. Now, when we come to gastric cancer in particular, we all realize that gastric cancer and the incidence has, both in North America as well as in Europe as in other parts of the world, declined over the past decade to a very marked extent. You see here data for Europe in the period of 1980 to 2015 from a publication several years ago, with for every individual country a steady decline. However, I should also point out that both for men at the left panel as well as for women at the right panel, in recent years, in particular for those countries who have the lowest incidence, we see that now for more than 10 years, 
there has been a stabilization in the incidence of gastric cancer. We do not continue that decline to zero. And in fact, if you zoom in, and here there's data for the United States with age-related time trends in the incidence of gastric cancer also for a period of 35 years, we say that actually in the younger age groups, there has been an increase in the incidence of gastric cancer, something that should really alert us to prevention and focusing on early detection. And apart from that, as you can see on this slide, which shows you the comparison of age standardized incidence rates of gastric cancer, in this particular case for women, but there are very similar data for men, from indigenous populations versus national estimates. And the main message is that there is a large inequality, in, in, inequality and differences and marked differences in incidence with across the world, higher incidence of gastric cancer, in particular in indigenous populations. If you would focus in particular, and in this case in US males, again, I could show a similar picture for US females. We know that even when gastric cancer has declined up until today, as shown here in data from the SEER database, there is a very marked difference in incidence of gastric cancer by race and ethnicity. For instance, showing here in, in uh, blue, you suffer gel cancer, and in red, incidence of gastric cancer, and the slide needs no further explanation. You see across different subgroups of the population that there are very significant differences in incidence of gastric cancer. And I'm well aware that those of you who practice in GI in areas with large subpopulations of those subgroups who have higher incidence of gastric cancer will recognize this uh, very, very well. So this makes also for the US situation as well as for the European situation, pr uh, pr the uh, screening and prevention of gastric cancer very, very relevant. And this slide just shows you schematically the different approaches and the different ways in which we can do so. First of all, looking at Helicobacter pylori screening and treatment. It is a seemingly very easy uh, approach, but yet you have to do so on a large population. If you look at the evidence as shown here in a meta-analysis of various different studies, randomized control trials looking at the impact of HP eradication versus placebo, the overall and consistent message is that early eradication of Helicobacter has a very significant effect in prevention of gastric cancer, reducing almost half the incidence of cancer, and thus also has a significant impact on mortality. In many populations, like in the US and in Europe, however, the focus is more on the later stage prevention, in particular looking at surveillance and endoscopic management of advanced lesions and tertiary cancer after treatment for early gastric cancer. Again, the general idea is that these lesions are nowadays rare, but these are data, for instance, from an earlier, quite recent study from the United States showing that, again, in particular in certain subgroups of the population, both focal gastric intestinal metaplasia as well as extensive gastric intestinal metaplasia is not a rare condition. If you look at it and if you know what to look for endoscopically, you may recognize it very, very easily in a significant proportion of your patients. This is similar data from an earlier study where we compare data on upper GI histological lesions in German and Dutch screening populations. These were people who did not come for an upper GI endoscopy for reasons of symptoms like dyspepsia. No, these were people who at the time when they underwent a screening colonoscopy were, for reasons of a study, also asked and consented to undergo an upper GI endoscopy as well. So this is a reflection of prevalence of lesions in a general population. And what you can see, again, in particular, if you look at the middle two bars or the left three bars of the study, both for the Netherlands as for Germany, prevalence of atrophic gastritis and intestinal metoplasia was marked even in a reflection of the general population. 
So the question then becomes what the risk is for their development of gastric cancer. And this is just one of various studies. There are also data from the US which looked at the time-related progression of pre-malignant lesions to gastric cancer, in this case in more than 97,000 Dutch patients with atrophy and metaplasia. And the main message, as also depicted by the red bar, is that in 10 years period, the proportion who progressed to invasive gastric cancer was approximately 4%. And I do not have the time here, but I would like to make the uh, comparison that this is not dissimilar from the progression rates of Barrett's esophageus to esophageal adenocarcinoma or colonic adenoma to colorectal cancer. So the question, likewise to the other two conditions that I mentioned, Barrett's esophagus and colorectal cancer, is then what if you focus on endoscopic screening for these lesions, does it have any impact on uh, uh, gastric cancer mortality? Well, these are, for instance, data from Korea, which indeed confirmed that screening for gastric cancer and for pre-malignant lesions had, again, a marked impact on mortality due to gastric cancer. So if we then come to what the existing guidelines are, this slide, this table, shows you an overview of available guidelines worldwide from the Asia-Pacific to also European and AGA guidelines looking at surveillance recommendations patient categories, interval of screening, and the evidence and the strength. And the main message is that apart from the North American AGA guideline, the overall recommendation is very strongly to at least offer screening to people with more extensive and severe atrophy and, and metaplasia, obviously taking into account comorbidity and age, etc. Now, if I can then add to that the very, Euro uh, very recent uh, European cancer screening recommendations, which came out last month, it indeed confirms, and now from the European Commission, gives the recommendation to all member countries, not only to screen for things that we widely do, breast cancer, cervical cancer, and colorectal, but also to consider and implement gastric cancer screening, in particular for high-risk groups. Now, I mentioned already that within our populations, and the same is true in the Netherlands, with very large immigrant populations with high prevalence of Helicobacter pylori, high prevalence of pre-malignant lesions, in particular in those above the age of 50, and also a high incidence of gastric cancer that targeted early testing, screening, and follow-up, according to the guidelines mentioned, is very likely to be beneficial and thus implemented and also recommended by the EU. And apart from that, if you look at Eastern European countries, then in the total population, the prevalence of Helicobacter and the incidence of gastric cancer is still very, very high. I hope that this input and this reflection, even when coming from a distance, from the European situation is helpful for your discussion. And once again, I wish you an excellent program and my sincere apologies and not for not being with you today. I hope to be so on the next occasion, and I look forward to that. Thank you very much.